everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about darning point shoes and the process that I take to darn my shoes and the reasons why I darn my shoes. But I want to start off by saying that darning is definitely not for everyone. We all have different foot types, needs, point shoe models, brands, and levels of strength in our feet. So before you go and darn your shoes, talk to your teacher, see what they advise, and also look into the possibility of a different brand of shoe, a different model, or even a different size. Because a lot of the time when we run into issues with our point shoes, it's not so much a you problem as it is a shoe problem. So some of these issues that we may face can be fixed with just finding a different shoe. Um, I've been darning my shoes for about three or four years now. I have hypermobile ankles and I was running into the issue where I was just going too far over the platform. As dancers, we love to have that nice archy line, but it was getting to the point where it was just too much. It was causing some foot pain and I just felt not as stable and aligned as I could be. So I started darning. And there are different types of darning um, that people like to do, and it's really up to you what you feel like you need if you're going to go um, down that path. Um, some people like to darn the entire platform. Other people like to take a circle and align the entire platform like so, so they're like outlining the shoe. Um, but I like to do more of a crescent shape, so like halfway. So I like to darn my shoes from this point all the way around to this point. And it's not so much there to provide a balance and keep me up there on my point shoe. It's more like a barrier, so a preventative measure to keep my foot from going into a restricted area. So you need to be careful when darning your shoes that you don't interfere with the platform with your balance so i found in the past it's all about trial and error and sometimes i've made the mistake of darning literally right on the platform and i found that if my stitching wasn't exactly that great or if there was a knot that got out of place it completely affected my balance and especially when it got in time to do pirouettes and stuff like that um, it was very much an issue so now i make sure that my darning is kind of along this outside line so it's a little bit above the platform just so again it's not there to hold me up on point it's there to prevent me from going too far over also we need to make sure especially when you get into point work you need to do strengthening exercises. Therabands, releves, heel raises, all of those are absolutely necessary in order to have the foot strength for point work. So I follow day to day, a daily regimen of exercises utilizing my Theraband, utilizing those heel raises. And there's a lot of literature that's out right now, especially from physical therapists at the Australian Ballet about the benefits of doing these types of ankle strengthening exercises. I know that a lot of companies have been implementing releves in parallel, just rising up and rising down at the end of bar to strengthen the ankles. And they've found that that's actually been huge um, injury prevention mechanism. So I'm not a physical therapist. I don't know the specifics, but I know that strengthening your ankles is crucial to dancing on point and to be getting that ankle strength because we don't want to start taking all these measures to try to compensate for a lack of strength. Everything needs to be working in tandem to support you and support you becoming the best answer that you can possibly be. So what are you going to need to darn your shoes? First off, obviously, your point shoes. Um, next up, I like to use an embroidery floss um, this is the kind that I use and I found this I think I bought this at Joanne fabrics but you can get it on Amazon Joann's Michaels I will link what I use in the description box below and I will also link I have not used this yet but I'm excited to use it um, this is the Suffolk darning kit and it comes with really just everything that you need to darn your point shoes so it comes with the crochet thread a thread cutter, a thimble, and two cotton darning needles. It's really important to find a durable needle when darning. Um, I, last year, had pretty low quality needles. I think it was during Nutcracker. In a time span of about 10 minutes, I broke like five needles. 
it was horrible. So invest in a quality needle um, that's durable, that's thick enough to be able to sustain itself, but not too thick where you can't pierce the satin. So I'll show you what I have. I have this already threaded right now. And as you can see, I have a lot of thread because I like to be able to darn a whole point shoe um, without having to obtain more thread and re-thread my needle. It, you know, it's fine if that happens, it happens and you can absolutely make it a seamless transition to the next thread, but I like, I rather have some left over at the end and save it for when I sew my point shoes than to have not enough and have to keep stopping and re-threading my needle. So that's what I have. Let me show you one shoe. I already darned this one. And as you can see from what I talked about before, I like to follow this crescent shape. So I never like to darn here. A lot of people do and they find that it gives them a super great balance. But I find that by doing that, especially when you want to work on smooth roll up and roll down that transition up onto point and down from point, it's just another impediment to that smooth transition. So again, it's up to you and up to what you feel like you need. But this is how I do it. So let me show you how to do this. So I started off by pulling the needle up through the satin just to make sure that this knot was completely out of the way and not affecting my balance on the platform. So to begin, we're gonna start with a downward sewing stitch. So we press this needle through the satin and pull it through like so. Now there's going to be this thread here. You're going to pull the needle through the loop, making sure it doesn't cross on the other side of that thread. So you're pulling this. Basically, it's just creating a series of knots all the way around the platform and you pull it tight. Again, you can see from here, there's about a centimeter or so between each stitch. So I like to keep my thumb firmly pressed on this particular um, thread. So to be, do this again, to overview, we take the needle, press it down through the satin, pull it all the way down, press it, and then you're gonna pull it up through this loop. Like so, and tighten it. Don't pull too tight, but just pull tight enough so that it's taut. See that? And we're gonna go all the way around. So when I darn my shoes, I take about four rows of stitching. That's going around the platform clockwise, then counterclockwise, clockwise, then counterclockwise. In this clip, I am on my third row of stitching, just following that edge of the platform. So here we go, the last few stitches to recap Press that needle down through the satin, making sure that you're not going too high up onto the platform. As you can see, since we've built up this little barricade here, you can really see how it's not directly on top of the platform, but it's just a little bit in front of it. So again, like I said, it's not there to support me on point. It's there to provide a barrier from preventing me from going too far over. So we press the needle down. We're gonna take this loop, wrap it around and press the needle down and pull it through the loop, tying that knot and tighten it. And we'll do it a few more times. So pressing it down, pushing it all the way, wrapping it through the center and pulling it tight. There we go. Uh oh, sometimes you have to readjust your hands. There we go. And like so, pressing down, wrapping around and pulling it through. last, I'm going to say two stitches. Make sure it's not too low though, because I don't like to have thread coming up. And like basically just enough thread at the end. Here we go. Last one. And the last one I do a little special. So I, wrap, I loop it around a few extra times just to ensure that we are secure and pull it all the way through. We've done that, we've gone all the way around. It's time to do the moment of truth. Trimming that right here, I'm gonna leave a little bit extra. And then I'm also gonna cut this extra thread where that initial knot was. There we go. And there we are, and yeah, 
So I like to make sure that these knots aren't in a place where they would interfere with my actual dancing. They're well out of the way, as you can see. And here they are. So as you can see, that was four rows of like, not fully all the way around the point shoe, but basically if you look at this bottom um, gathering here, it's along the lines of this guy. So we go to there and to there. That's kind of my marker. And there we go, everyone. That is it. That is how I darn my shoes for my day-to-day -day rehearsals and performances. And really depending on the time and how I'm feeling, I might do a few more rows or maybe less rows. It's really a learning experience and you have to feel what works for you and what is best for your dancing in that particular moment. Always talk to your teacher about this um, before you start darning and know that especially as your beginning point work, you want to focus your energy on finding shoes that work for your feet, strengthening your technique and strengthening your ankles and feet and toes and all of those intrinsic muscles. I, I recommend working on that before doing all these additions to your shoes, finding you know different ways of breaking in your shoes or darning your shoes. Really focus on finding shoes first that work for your feet before branching out into these different techniques. You know, I didn't start darning my shoes until I'd been dancing on point for many, many years. So your feet really definitely evolve as your dancing evolves. So keep that in mind as you search for your next pair of point shoes, as you figure out if darning is right for you, keep in mind that your feet are constantly changing and that is okay. That is absolutely what all of us, every dancer goes through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy dancing, happy darning, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.